Hey guys, in my last video, I determined what size I want the ballot scissors to be. So let's make a fixture for this new prototype's handles. I think it's good to try different approaches to the same problem. What I had been doing before worked okay, but it added lots of extra material on the ends. Which means I had to be careful not to bend the stock. I think it might be possible to make the handles in two operations, but I wanted to do something where I could use the rest of the 3 16 thick steel I already had, and possibly save money on titanium in the future. I was satisfied enough with the SMW vise to get a second one. I designed a fixture that used more of the 2x3 stock I have. Last time, I used a relief neck end mill to mill the sides of the fixture. This time, I thought I'd try a longer fluted end mill to get a cleaner finish. Even with light cuts, it put a lot of load on the machine. There are grooves for screws to hold down the fixture. You can see the long chips want to wrap around the end mill. Maybe I should have got an end mill with chip breaking gashes in the flutes, or just improve my coolant situation. The air blast is actually probably making it a little worse here. Anyway, this is the bottom of the fixture. I'm milling a couple holes to try pressing pins in instead of machining them so I won't have to remove as much material this time. But there is a decent amount of material to remove on the other side. This fixture will have all three operations to make the handles. And I leave a small island for the third operation. Next, I mill a pocket to hold bar stock and some deeper pockets to hold some Mighty Bite pit bulls. This replaces doing the first operation in a vise. I had some trouble pressing in the pins. And it didn't work. I remachined one of the pins into a diamond. I should have used a vise to press the pins in. That usually works better. Okay, it fits. Unfortunately, it's not quite as straight as I hoped it would be. I got it as good as I could in the section for the first stop. I haven't used this small of pipples before, so I was a little bit worried about the stock slipping. But it seems like it was no problem. In my last video, I came up with a design that allows for the option of slots in the handles. I felt like using a ramping contour would be faster than an adaptive toolpath in the slots. Hmm. Maybe that was too big a step down. Let's try again. Well. Looks like it didn't really work out for this end mill either. Maybe it's just because I didn't perfectly get all the chips of carbide from the broken end mill out or something. I was also able to bring the other holes to size. I thought some chamfers would look cool on the bottom. I'm doing this maybe a bit strangely. The next thing I need to do is cut a pocket for the second operation. The reason I haven't made this already is because it's easier if I do the first stop and get the outside dimension right and measure it instead of trying to measure the inside of the pocket. I rough out more of the stock, but I'm leaving extra material in the first two operations so that everything can be finished in the last operation so everything matches up. For the pocket that holds the handle scales, I decided to use a feed mill. Ramping down is faster than using an adaptive tool path, but it wears down the bottom of your end mills and isn't the best in titanium. The feed mill is meant to take fast shallow cuts however. It has short rounded flutes that direct the cutting forces in the more rigid vertical direction. 
Hopefully this tool will work better in titanium than regular end mills did. I clean up the floors and the walls with an eighth inch end mill. Finally, it can be screwed down for the final operation. Now I can do a finish pass and take it to final size. Next, I switch to a ball end mill to create the curved surface geometry of the handle. And do the last bit of deburring. It came out okay. I think the surface finish could be improved. And I accidentally left stock to leave on on this part. And I noticed the bottom chamfering tool cut too big a chamfer at one end for some reason. Let's try again. Oh wow. I didn't expect that the eighth inch end mill would break from this. I think I need to come up with a better idea for these slots if I want to be able to do this in titanium. The slots are too small to do the same strategy with the feed mill. Again, I want to see if I can find something faster than using a small end mill and an adaptive tool path. I decided to try drilling out most of the material. I think I heard about this concept on the Business of Machining podcast. Drills often have the fastest material removal rate, even with inexpensive steel drills. And even if I was doing an adaptive tool path, I'd still probably want to drill a starting hole for the end mill in titanium instead of ramping. So I thought I might as well give this a shot. Next, I switched to an end mill to get rid of the remaining material. I was a little worried I'd still have to do multiple depths or something, but I felt like if this didn't work, it wouldn't be worth it. But the slots aren't all exactly the same. I switch to a 332nd end mill, because that's the biggest that will fit. And it works too. And even the 16th inch has no problem. Nice. I'm doing such large chamfers, I feel like I could have used that to my advantage when roughing out the slots, but I wasn't sure the best way to do it. I also thought the chamfers could be something I'd get rid of if the handles end up being too light. In the next hop, I made sure there was no stock remaining on the button area. And in the third op, I thought maybe I was getting that big chamfer because I made the fixture slightly inaccurately. So I tried shifting the part in fusion slightly to compensate. I also added more passes to the surfacing tool path. The curved surface came out better than last time, but the chamfer looks the same as before. I think it could still be improved. I added another hole to the fixture. I thought the milling sounded more chattery in the center of the part. I also decided to try leaving more material remaining in the second op. Then I do roughing passes in the third op with the ball end mill. And I do lighter finishing passes. This means that the sizes of cut being taken in the finishing pass will all be more consistent in size. And I made every pass a climb cut. This looks even better, but I don't like these little bumps where Fusion thinks it can stop the tool path. So I copied the surface and extended it a bit. I also tried shifting things over even more, but still no luck with the chamfer. Looking at the original again, the rest of the deburring was fine. It even went all the way around this complex edge, but now it's too big on one side and there's a burr on the other. Same with this hole. Also, this top edge is sharp. It should also be too big if things are positioned wrong, so I shifted everything back. 
I think I have some kind of angular problem. I thought maybe the fixture could be slanted, but it was fine. It's only happening in one area, so I thought maybe it's a problem because of the little pocket on the bottom. So I did another test. Oh wow, it actually does flex pretty easy. I guess I should add more support here, which means cutting everything down except a small circle of material. And I cut a channel for the bottom deburring tool. And it worked. It's all even all the way around. And there's no little bumps at the edge because of my extended surface. I made more than enough to test the mechanism, but now that I have everything running nice, I feel like I should give titanium another try. I think my biggest problem machining titanium was that I didn't use coolant. I've been using air because I wanted to make filming easier. I'm actually surprised how much I've been able to do without coolant. Titanium might be the limit though. So, filled up the coolant tank. And I mixed it to 9%. I ordered a bar of titanium. It's kind of rough though. It's not really a bar, I guess. And it's oversized by quite a bit, and it's not even straight. This is why I left room on the fixture. So that I can make a bigger slot for this material. And I think I found a position for the camera and coolant nozzles where everything doesn't get soaked. I got this new bar of titanium because it's grade 5. Before, I was essentially using pure titanium, which is less strong and more annoying to machine. That was definitely a mistake. Hopefully this will work better. Whew, looks good. I'm just following a proven cut recipe and the Lakeshore carbide end mill that goes with it. I just wanted to stop figuring out everything on my own and have at least one setup that I knew would work. And it did. Unfortunately, I had to get thicker stock for titanium, so I do an adaptive toolpath on the top. I also face the stock with a proven cut recipe. The passes are at 45 degrees, which sometimes I do just because it looks cool. But in this case, I thought maybe it was because it was to reduce how much heat builds up or something. Seems like it'll be fine either way. I then switched to drilling. I definitely ran the drills too slow initially and they got all tangled up. I manually sped it up a little. For the other end mills, I couldn't go to prove and cut. So I just looked at lots of speeds and feed charts and tried to find something that seemed reasonable. My slotting strategy seemed to work, even with the smaller end mills. I didn't even really change the chamfer speeds and feeds from stainless, and it still worked fine. In fact, I accidentally made big chamfers where I shouldn't have. But I thought I'd not waste titanium and test the next operations with this piece. I used the same 6 fluid end mill again. And then I switched to the feed mill, which seems to work well in titanium. And I clean everything up with an eighth inch end mill. I still use a ramping strategy for the counter bore, and it doesn't seem like there's any clogging, so that's good. For the dovetail and radius tools, I use speeds and feeds from Harvey Tool. Op 3, I finish the outside and I do the usual surfacing. And deburring. I think this looks really good. I made more without the chamfer mistake. So what have I learned? I learned I can hold a very small amount of material with the smallest pit bulls with no issues. I tried a different way of fixturing the handles, which works, but I think I should still probably try to make the handles in two operations, even if it uses more material. But maybe that's offset by the fact that I think I probably should get Blank's water jet cut. 
The drilling technique for the slots worked great, but if I do water jet, I could also get the slots roughed out for me and save time. Seems like coolant and grade 5 titanium made a much bigger difference than what tools or speeds and feeds I used. I also learned that filming with coolant isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but I'll still probably switch back to air for lots of projects. Alright, just for fun, let's sanitize these parts. It's been a little while. I hope all my water hasn't evaporated, oh my god. You know, uh, maybe I'll just wait until I've made the other titanium parts first. So subscribe for that and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.